Funding for Pierre Frenet's Cuisine Rapide is made possible by Caroline Importers Limited, Teaneck, New Jersey. about mushrooms. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Pierre Frenet. Today I'm going to cook mushroom, different kind of mushroom. And later on I will take you to a family in Pennsylvania who own a restaurant and they collect all together. They all, the whole family goes in the woods in the summertime and they collect mushrooms and they cook them too for you. It's very good. Now my first recipe is going to be a shrimp with mushroom sauce. So what we need is three quarter pound of chanterelle, which I have right here. The chanterelle that I have right here, they are imported, they came from France. But they grow all over the United States, in uh, the New York area, in the Catskill, and uh, I'm sure, I don't know about uh, around here in uh, Maryland, but I know they grow, there's a lot of them who grow in uh, the West Coast, around the Seattle area. They grow in Burgundy. It's in uh, July, the end of July, and uh, I have a secret place and that my grandfather showed me, and I still go back to France sometime in July, and always go back to that place to pick mushroom. So when you pick mushroom, this is what they look like, right? Like this, they're kind of dirty. They, they, sometimes when you pick them, they have leaves around, dead leaves or new leaves. So you, you have to look for them. Now, to clean them, you see like this here, you got some, this have to be removed, a piece of leaf. So you just go around it like this, and uh, you always cut the stem. The stem, this is where it's on the ground, so you got, so this got to be cut like this. Okay, so you wash them, and you dry them. So, to do this uh, recipe, we need three quarter pound of chanterelle, and they have another name in France, it's called Girol, where I come from. Now, you could use other mushroom too, any kind of mushroom you like to. Now, to do the recipe, we need two tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of chopped shallots, salt and pepper to taste, two teaspoons of paprika, and two tablespoons of wine vinegar. I have two kinds here, this is a new one to me, it's a champagne vinegar. You know, so many kind of vinegar today, why not, one more. Then, we're gonna use a half a cup of heavy cream, a quarter cup of sour cream, and two tablespoons of lemon juice, and then we're gonna cook the shrimp. I need about a pound and a half of shrimp, which I'm gonna peel and divin. Now, as a garnish, I'm gonna use those very large mushroom, the beautiful mushroom. I'm gonna blend them, I'm gonna cook them with tomatoes, plump tomatoes, and with fresh herb. I'll show you how to do it. Now, to begin with, we cook the mushroom. So, I have a heavy skillet here. Make sure it's got to be any kind of skillet, but it's got to be heavy gauge, because it'll take, we're gonna reduce the sauce and saute them. This is a no stick skillet. So, two tablespoons of butter, this is four, this is two, four, four, this is two, here. Okay. Okay, now. Like I said, the pan has got to be very hot, but we don't want to burn the butter. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of shallots, which I'm going to saute them briefly to get the flavor out of it. Don't burn it, don't brown it. The flavor will shine. See, it cooks very fast. I'm gonna put about half of that basket of mushroom here, which is about three quarter pound. 
You could use, like I say, any kind of mushroom. You saute them very briefly. Put a little bit of paprika. Put a little more. Two teaspoons. And we saute them like this. You cannot saute like I do. You stir them like this. And we're going to put two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. The reason I'm using white wine vinegar, I want the, the sauce to stay white. You could use red wine vinegar, but it's going to change the, the appearance of the sauce. All right. So we're going to cook that very slowly for a while. So to this, I'm going to add half a cup of heavy cream. Now, so I've got some mushroom here. They're beautiful. I just put them down like this. We're going to cook that for a while, for a few minutes. Okay. Now the tomatoes, I want to show you how to peel tomatoes. I'm sure you know about it, to do it, but for some of you who doesn't know. What I have here, I have boiling water. So what you do, you cut the tomatoes, both of them, and you put them in, in a, see, very easy. You put them in boiling water for 10 seconds going to be fast. We turn them around to make sure they're ready in boiling water. I'm going to turn this here, so those mushroom. Okay, they have to cook a little bit on the other side. All right, that should be done, hopefully. And I'm going to remove, I'm going to go, to, go here, remove the skin. You know, I advise you to cool them off, you know. <laughs> you may burn your fingers, but, you know, I've been cooking for so many years, nothing. I got tough skin. You see how easy it is to remove? See? Yeah. Don't go over 10 seconds, and especially in the summertime when they're very ripe. Ah, oh, a little more. When they're very ripe, the skin is removed very fast, very easily. So what I'm going to do now, this tomato, I'm going to cut it in half like this. I'm going to take a towel or cheesecloth like this, put it right in here. And it's very simple. I'm going to form a little bowl, ABC, you know. You shape it like this, you form a little bowl. And so... That's very simple. Now, I'm going to put the tomato right on top of it, the center, to cover it, and uh, you cook that for about five minutes together. All right, the sauce is, the chantre is cooking very nicely. Now, you have to taste all the time. Whatever you do, you have to taste. It's very important to test. Okay, a little bit of salt. Now, I got some tomatoes here, which I did before. It's already made. I'm gonna cover it, and by that time, they're gonna be finished. And I'm gonna place the shrimp right in here. Cook them very, very briefly for about a few minutes, you know? We don't want the shrimp to be overcooked. All right. I'm going to finish my uh, tomatoes here. What I have here, I got some fresh herb. Sometimes you see in the spice, when you buy spices, dry spices, you see some spices, they say bouquet de Provence, bouquet of Provence, you know. Um, they're very expensive, but you could make your own. So what I have here, I have four herbs. I got marjoram, thyme, 
basil, and uh, rosemary. So I'm going to put some over like this. Okay. Now, this is about right. So I'm going to put the shrimp here. About six shrimp here. This is cooked. I'm going to put one mushroom in the center, like this here. And I'm going to put some champignons, chanterelles around it. And now I have to finish the sauce. I'm going to bind this. It's very important to put the sour cream at the last minute. Because the sour cream curdles. So we put this at the last minute. We turn off the heat. I'm going to add two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Bind this together at the last minute. OK. And it puts some stuff so right over the shrimp. And I'm going to top this here. I got some fresh herbs, but I'm going to top this with a little bit of coriander on the outside. Well, this is my shrimp with mushroom dish. Like I said, you could use any kind of mushroom to do it. Heavenly chanterelle mushrooms with shrimp. Next up, behind the scenes. This time, Joe's Restaurant. In the factory line town of Reading, Pennsylvania, about an hour's drive northwest of Philadelphia, is a restaurant with the unassuming name of Joe's. It all began in 1910, when the original Joe Zarnecki, Joe Sr., opened a bar that became famous for the wild mushroom soup it served up to its patrons. Still in family hands three generations later, Joe's fame has blossomed like its menu, which still celebrates the mushroom. And now we join Pierre and Joe Sr.'s grandson, Jack Zarnecki. Jack, you have a great reputation cooking with mushroom. What are you going to do for me today? Thank you. Well, welcome to Reading. We're going to cook with some mushrooms. Okay. We just got in some fresh, what are called hedgehog mushrooms uh -huh. from Oregon. Uh, these were a little bit unusual. Uh, you see, most mushrooms have either gills or little pores on the I underside. See. These have little needles. They taste very much like chatterelles, which I think uh, you know something about. Yeah, I think we have something similar in France, but I'm not too sure, you know. Well, they've got a flavor very similar to chatterelles, too. Well, a little apricotty flavor, which is very, very nice. I can't and, wait to mm, taste them, you know. Oh, I think you'll enjoy it. So what are you going to cook for, for me? Well, we have some locally raised veal. Uh -huh. This is raised by a small farmer outside of Reading, and uh, you can see very, very high quality veal. Oh, yes. Comes in fresh every week. It's, uh, I think it's the finest in the world. It, it looks great, you know, it's very lean and uh, not too much fat, and can wait. Thanks. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to saute the veal on, uh, in a little bit of oil. Just brown it a little bit on each side. Uh -huh for just a little bit. You don't want it too brown, huh? Just turn it not bit, too yeah. brown because you want the nice white color of the oven. Now this has to go and cook in a very hot oven, uh, 450, 500 Hi. degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes. I see. And we'll come back to this a little bit later. So the next thing is mushroom, mushroom, huh? Yes. These are the hedgehogs, about maybe a, a cup and a half. A cup and a half. A whole mushroom. Now this is important for appearance because mm -hmm. when you do this dish, you want to see the whole finished mushroom on the veal. It looks very, very nice. And we continue to saute it a little bit. And now we'll begin to add the flavors which make it a little unusual. I said uh, earlier that these mushrooms taste a little bit like apricot, a little fruity flavor. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of uh, 
apricot liqueur. This is what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Just a I'm little bit of apricot liqueur, Likewise. about maybe a tablespoon. Tablespoon? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to add to that a little bit of peach schnapps. Ah, that's what it is, I guess. Which eh? has got a nice, fresh, fruity peach flavor. But not too much, just a little bit to enhance the flavor of the mushrooms. A any cooking that we do with mushrooms, we do to enhance the flavor of the mushrooms. We don't want them to taste like garlic or a lot of spice mm -hmm. and herbs. We want it to taste like the mushroom. You want the true flavor of the mushroom to come through. That's right. And just let it cook on a very, very low heat for about 15 and 20 minutes. 15, and, we'll 20 minutes. and we'll have a look at that in just a little bit. Very good. So what next are you going to cook for me with this? Well, we do something in the restaurant called Pennsylvania polenta. Now, Polenta, of course, is made with that's cornmeal. Some, yeah, but that's something new to me, Pennsylvania polenta. Well, it's not really polenta. We, we cheat a little bit. You're going to give uh, uh, an Italian touch to it? Well, we're going to give it an Uncle Ben's touch to it. We're going to add Uncle Ben's <laughs> cream of wheat. <laughs> what you have to do at this point is just let it cook, and it thickens. And it takes about seven or eight minutes for it to thicken. Because this is Cuisine Rapide, we have yeah. one which is all ready to go. I see. And this is the way it looks. And you'll notice it's set. It's fairly hard at this point because you that need to be able yeah. to cut shapes out of it. And what we're going to do is cut a little shape from a metal fabricator. And we're going to just simply lift them out like that. It looks that. like a mushroom to me. Like so. We'll do another one just for good measure. I see. And lift it out. Looks like a chandelier. And we're all ready to go. Now we're set to put everything together. We'll put our mushrooms over here. Take the veal from the oven. It should be nice uh -huh. and hot and smoking now. And we'll start by just simply adding the veal. And now we'll put some... Finished mushrooms. Mm, smells some good. Of the you know, I can't wait to taste that. Those on mushrooms top. look great to me. You know. Just a little bit. I love to pick mushroom myself. You know, yeah. when I was a kid in France, I used to go with my grandfather. I'm sure, like you did. It's great exercise. Yeah, well, I went. Father, my father. My father taught me how to pick mushrooms. I see. And we'll add a little bit of the polenta. And what we'll do for decoration here is add a little bit of red pepper puree. I see. And decorate it just a little bit to make it look a little more like a mushroom. I can't wait to taste it. Nothing like wild mushroom, you know? We have a saying in our family that uh, food and wine are the second and third best things in life. And you are the king of the wild mushroom. You know? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Veal with fresh hedgehog mushrooms from Joe's. Now back to Pierre in the kitchen. My next recipe is going to be pasta with wild mushroom. When you go out and pick wild mushroom, which is fun to do, I do it all the time in the summertime. When you come back home, you cook them very simply. And this is what I'm going to do right now. So to do the first recipe, we need half a pound of La Porta Bello mushroom. They are Italian. Those that are imported. I understand they grow in this country. This is what they look like. And they're very large and they're very tasty. Now, the next one we need is a half a pound of shikaki mushroom, those that are cultivated. And then we need a quarter cup of olive oil, one tablespoon of minced garlic, half a cup of chopped parsley, and salt and pepper to taste. And then we're going to cook that, of course, with pasta. I have some very nice pasta. This is an egg pasta. This is what I'm going to cook. They're in very nice shape. They're very interesting. But you could use any kind of pasta you desire. And then, to finish the whole thing, of course, you got to have some good Italian Parmesan cheese. Now, I'm going to cook for you the portabello mushroom. I have here a quarter cup of olive oil. But I'm going to slice some mushroom for you with a very sharp knife, and you slice them very thin. All right. 
Rezgat ve büyüye bari kore ve niçtik. Alright. So the first thing I do, I'm going to put the mushroom in here. I got some already, the shikaki mushroom already sliced for you, the barafe pan. Now, while the mushroom are cooking, I'm going to cook some pasta. I got some boiling water with a little bit of salt and uh, some uh, little, bit, little bit of olive oil in there. So I got three quarter of a pound of pasta. They're going to cook for about seven minutes or eight minutes. Those pasta, they're very new to me, but you don't stir them. You just bring them to a bowl and they cook for about eight minutes. Now while my mushrooms are cooking, I'm going to make something for you, a little salad with wild mushroom. So here I have three kinds of mushroom. This is the oyster mushroom, which uh, they are cultivated. I have cramini mushroom, which is cultivated too. And here I have a mushroom, which is a little different. It's imported and wild. It's called Cordian Shallow Mushroom, imported from Italy. Now, I'm going to slice them. I'm going to marinate them. And uh, with the, for a while, for about 10, 15 minutes, this is the cremini. You slide them very thin with a very sharp knife. And this is the oyster mushroom, same thing here, very thin, like this. And this is the cordon sheer cello mushroom. They're very tender. See, I could see it. They're very good. I tried them this morning. They're very nice flavor. Okay. Now I got about a, one third of a pound of those each mushroom together. Now I'm gonna make a vinaigrette. I have uh, right here two tablespoons of shallots and one teaspoon of garlic, chopped garlic, and three teaspoons or one tablespoon of uh, Dijon mustard. Put a little salt. We're going to put about two tablespoons of vinegar. Four tablespoons of olive oil, maybe more, five, because the mushroom they're gonna absorb, they're gonna absorb the olive oil. The whisk. That's a vinaigrette. I like my vinaigrette to stay together. I don't want it broken up. So that way you got a very good distribution of everything. So this, I'm going to add some mushroom. We're going to toss them, put some chopped parsley over, or any carb you like, any kind of herb you like. Just toss them for good. And they're going to marinate for about 15 minutes. If they marinate too long, they get very limp. <laughs> they keep alive. Keep, all right, that's about right. Okay. So now, my pasta are cooking. This is doing very well here. We're going to drain them. More here. Make sure they're well drained. And I'm going to add a little more of olive oil because, as you could see, most of the olive oil has been absorbed by the, by the mushroom. Little bit of garlic, about a tablespoon of chopped garlic. 
This is going to be an Italian dish, I tell you. Very simple dish. Oh boy, I wish you could smell it. Smell it red. Where my pasta here? Well drained. We're going to put some herbs. I got pasta here. You could put uh, anything you want. Basil is good. Freshly grated pepper. I'm using black pepper. You see, I got a black pepper meal. We're going to saute them. Now, I got some Parmesan cheese. A little bit, not much. You know, just a little bit like this. Just for the flavor, just for the flavor. I'm gonna serve that the Parmesan cheese on the side, so if you would want some more, that's it. Ah, I don't know. I hope it's gonna fit. I'm gonna make sure it fit. No, they won't fit. But it's okay. They fit. You pick them up. <laughs> okay, look. Now, I have the salad. What I have here is three kinds of uh, on dive, radicchio, and lettuce, red leaf lettuce, or Boston lettuce. You could use babe lettuce, anything you want. And then, I'm going to put some of those marinated mushroom. Right, a good serving of it. All right, this is one serving, big serving. Well, my two wild mushroom dishes, one with sweet pasta, one with the green, different greens and salad. And I hope you're going to become wild about those two recipes. See you soon in Cuisine Rapine. Goodbye. Wild mushrooms with pasta and salad. Two more speedy recipes from Pierre Frenet's Cuisine Rapide. Funding for Pierre Frenet's Cuisine Rapide has been made possible by Carillon Importers Limited, Teaneck, New Jersey. This is PBS. Pierre's quick and easy recipes from today's show, plus more than 250 others, are contained in this companion cookbook. 65 step-by-step -step line drawings guide you through Pierre's classic technique. To order this 384-page hardcover book, call 1-800-635-COOK. The cost is $22.50 plus $2 shipping and handling. Credit cards are accepted or send your check to P.O. Box 37142, Omaha, Nebraska, 68137.